Hello guys and welcome to another tutorial. Today we are gonna learn about the essential parts of the Unity Navmesh system. At the end we are gonna have a fully functional scene with a player that you can move by clicking to tell him where to go and an enemy AI who's gonna chase the player. First of all, what is a Navmesh? A Navmesh is a data structure used in artificial intelligence apps to guide agents in pathfinding through different spaces. In this video, we are going to cover the four main parts of the Navmesh system. First, we have the Navmesh surface, which is the main data structure, basically the map where the AI is going to navigate on. Two, we have the Navmesh agent, the component that handles the moving of the AI. We have the Navmesh obstacle, pretty self-explanatory. This will be the game object that the agent is going to avoid during its navigation. And finally, the off-mesh links, which help the agent to traverse between two disconnected areas. Let's begin. Here we have a prototype map that I created using ProBuilder. If you want to learn how to use this tool to create your own maps, check out my last video. First, let's install the AI navigation package. Go to Window, Package Manager, select Unity Registry, type in AI and you'll find the package. Hit install. And if for some reasons the package doesn't have all the components that I'm gonna use in this video, you can get the files for all the Navmesh components on GitHub. I'll leave a link in the description just in case, because it is recommended to use these ones. Okay. Let's start with the surface. Here in the hierarchy, I have grouped everything together so it looks cleaner and everything is easier to find. Let's select the map and add in a Navmesh surface component. As you can see, it has multiple settings. We have the agent type, this is the default one, humanoid, and let's open the agent settings. The navigation window will pop up and let's just drag it near the inspector. Here, we can define all the settings for our agent. We can control how tall he's gonna be, how thick he's gonna be, and on how steep of a slope he can move on. We are gonna leave the settings as they are by default, but you can change them however you want to fit your scene. Let's go back to the inspector tab and select the default area to walkable and collect only the current object, which is the map, and press bake. The blue highlighted zones that appeared are the ones where the agent can navigate on. But currently, we don't have an agent, so let's make a player. Create 3D object, let's make a capsule, name it player, move it somewhere in the scene, and I have some imported prototype materials from the asset store, so let's make him green. Just drag and drop the material onto the object. Great. Next step is to add the nav mesh agent component on the player. Let's go a bit over the settings. We are gonna set the humanoid type, the one that already has the base surface and the only one we have yet. The base offset is just a vertical displacement of the object, we are gonna leave it how it is. Let's go to the steering section. We have speed, which controls how fast the character is gonna move. The angular speed determines how fast the player is going to turn. The acceleration represents the amount of time it takes to reach the max speed. The stopping distance is the space between the agent and its destination, so you can make it stop further away from the player or from a certain point. And auto braking which helps the agent to not overshoot his destination. The obstacle avoidance section has the radius and height that represent the minimum distance to keep clear from other obstacles or agents. The quality, where the higher you put it, the less chances your agent has to overlap with the obstacles, but keep in mind that it also takes longer to compute. And the priority, basically if there is another agent with a lower priority, that means a higher number, this agent is going to ignore it. The pathfinding section is pretty self-explanatory, the auto traverse of mesh links basically he goes automatically through the links when we set them up, but we're gonna get to that at the end. Auto repat, so he always recalculates his route and chooses the best and shortest option. And the area mask, which allows the agent to only move through the selected area type. Okay, we have the surface, we have the agent. Let's make a quick simple click to move script for our character to test it out. Go to assets, create a script folder. It is important to keep your project organized, even if it's just a prototype, it's good practice. Create a script in that folder and name it click to move. What we want to do is shoot a raycast from the camera and wherever we click, we want our character to go to that point. First, we need to type up here using unityengine.ai, then let's create a reference for the navmesh agent, call it agent. In the start function, we are gonna grab the reference, so agent equals get component of type navmesh agent. Then in the update function, let's say if we are pressing the right mouse click, we want to get a point from the raycast, so let's create a ray call it ray, which is gonna shoot from the main camera, so camera.main.screenPointArray, input that mouse position, so it's gonna create a ray from the camera and follow our cursor. Let's also make a raycast hit so we can get the point. And finally, if physics.raycast, let's pass in our ray and hit, we'll set the agent destination to the hit point. Now don't forget to attach the script to the player. Let's go back to Unity and test it out. 
press play and you'll see that wherever we click the agent is gonna calculate the shortest route to go to that point. Notice that if we click outside the map he won't move because the agent can only move on the baked surface. Looking at the scene we can observe that the top of some boxes and of other objects are also highlighted blue so our agent thinks he can go up there but he can't. To resolve this issue we need to define these objects as obstacles. To do that let's select all the objects that we want to be just obstacles and add in a nav mesh modifier component. Here we're gonna check the override area setting and set the area type to not walkable. Now if we go to the map and press bake again you'll notice that the blue has disappeared and our character no longer thinks he can go on those objects. Now if we want him to have a way to go on top of some objects we'll have to set up some off mesh links which allow the character to go from one area to another other, even if they are disconnected. Let's select the platforms for example and the cylinders and in their modifier let's put the area type to walkable again and rebake the map. Now let's create an empty object and add in a nav mesh link component. This component creates two points that are gonna connect the discontinued areas. So let's connect the ground to the platforms. Put one point here on the ground and the other one on the top of the platform. Notice that the points have to be on the baked surface. Now if we press play and click that platform is gonna go through the link to get up there and also come back down if told to. Let's put some more links to connect more areas. I also put these orange shapes to act like jump pads to get on the bridge so let's have some links there and let's see it. Now we have many more ways to navigate to on the scene. You can see that the link transition is pretty snappy but for that we also have a script that can change the way the AI is traversing through those links. You can get this script from GitHub as well, I'll put the link in the description. Attach it to the player, you can select whatever mode that you want but we're gonna use parabola to look like a jump. The final part that we're gonna do is create an enemy that follows the player. Let's create another capsule, call it enemy, make him red and attach a nav mesh agent component. First, we need one more agent type, so open the agent settings and let's create one called enemy. And for this agent, let's make him a bit taller so he can go under the bridge or under this arch so he has to work a bit if he wants to catch the player. Don't forget to change the agent type in the nav mesh agent component to enemy. Let's add one more surface component on the map, select the enemy agent type and hit bake. Now the enemy has its own data. Next thing we're gonna do is create a script that makes him follow the player. So go to the scripts folder, create C sharp script, name it enemy and open it up. You also have to be using unity engine.ai as well as a reference to the nav mesh agent but this time we also need a reference for the player. We'll create a transform variable for the player and in the start function we're gonna grab a reference for the agent and for the player using find object of type click the move which is a script that transform. In the update function we'll simply put agent.setDestination, player.position and save. If we press play the enemy is going towards the player regardless of where he moves, always calculating the shortest path. If we want him to use the links as well, since he's a different agent type we'll have to create new ones so we'll just add one more link component to the object and select the enemy agent type. You can put them in the same positions or you could have unique paths and shortcuts for every agent that's completely up to you. We finally reached the end. I hope you learned something out of this video. You can expand on this Navmer system in many ways, but it's important to know the basics first. If you enjoyed it, please press the like and subscribe button. And also, if you have any feedback or video idea for the future, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to check our socials where we are gonna post insights of the horror game that we're currently working on called Whispers from the Past. You can even play the small sample of it that we did for a game jam on itch.io. All links will be in the description. Thank you for watching and until next time, peace.